In this video, we look at how to compute the reorder point. This video is part two of a three-part video set on reorder point. First, we look at the relationship between the reorder point and lead time demand. Suppose both lead time and demand are constant. Then the lead time demand would also be a constant, meaning the lead time demand would be the same across the different order cycles. In such a situation, we can compute the lead time demand as just the product of lead time and demand. And in such a situation, our best reorder point would be simply the lead time demand itself. R is equal to LD equal to L into D. When we set the reorder point in this manner, we will neither have excess inventory nor a stock out. Let's look at a simple example to understand this. Tennis balls are sold at a sports store in Central Delhi. Eight tennis balls are sold daily. The store owner always purchases a carton of 160 tennis balls from the supplier. If the lead time to replenish is 7.5 days, what should the store's reorder point be? So applying the formula R equal to LD equal to L into D, we get the reorder point should be 60. Now look at this graph. You can see how the demand rate being a constant, we have a linear equation here and we have instantaneous replenishment. So we look at the reorder point as 60. What does it mean? It means that when the inventory level comes down from 160 and reaches 60, the store owner should place the next order for tennis balls. And these will arrive when the inventory level exactly becomes zero, which is after 7.5 days from placing the order. And he will then have the replenishment. So here we have assumed that both lead time and demand are constant. Now, more generally speaking, lead time and demand are variable. In such a case, we model them as probability distributions, where mu L represents the mean of lead time and sigma square L its variance. And similarly, mu D and sigma square D represent the mean and variance of demand. In, in, in that case, the lead time demand would also be a distribution. It would also be a variable and be modeled with a distribution. For it, we compute the mean lead time demand as simply mean of lead time into mean of demand. Mu LD is equal to mu L into mu D. And the lead time demand varies across the order cycles. Sigma square LD, the variance of lead time demand would be equal to mu L into sigma square D plus sigma square L into mu square D. Even though the square is missing here about the mu L term, this formula is derived systematically and is dimensionally consistent. To understand this formula, let's apply with a simple example. The demand for check deposit chalans in a bank has a mean of 15 per day and a standard deviation of 2.2 per day. The lead time to replenish these chalans, which happens by printing, has a mean of six days and a variance of four days square. What are the mean and standard deviation of lead time demand? So let's apply what we just learned. The mean lead time demand is mu L into mu D, which happens to be 15 into six or 90 chalans. Sigma square LD is given by this formula, which turns out to be 929.04, which means that sigma LD, the standard deviation of lead time demand is 30.48 chalans. So the lead time demand for chalans has a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 30.48. So in this way, when the lead, when the lead time and the demand or either of them is variable, we can compute the mean and the variance of lead time demand and use them for modeling the, the, the lead time demand. Okay, now let's move on and try to understand how reorder point lead time demand are related to a concept known as stock out. Generally speaking, as we saw in the last slide, the lead time demand varies over order cycles. Now let's assume that we fix a particular reorder point R. Then when the replenishment arrives, there are three possible situations. The first is that the lead time demand is less than R. If that is the situation, then there would be some inventory still left in the stock 
when replenishment arrives. In the second situation, the lead time demand is exactly equal to R. In this case, there would be no inventory left, but there would also not be a stock out. We would have just exactly zero inventory left. In the third situation, the lead time is greater than, lead time demand is greater than R. In this case, there would be a stock out. There would be no inventory left, but there would be a stock out. So, generally speaking, a stock out can happen in any order cycle. Because the lead time demand is a variable, it can be any of these three. And whenever it is the third situation, there can be a stock out. So let's look at an example and see to uh, you know when stock out occurs here. Anshu Systems is a retailer of two terabyte hard drives. It keeps a limited stock of these drives, which it replenishes by ordering frequently from a wholesaler. The forecast of lead time demand during the next 12 order cycles is known to us. If the reorder point followed by Ansu systems is four, identify the order cycles in which a stock out will occur. So here we are given 12 order cycles and uh, lead time demands in each of them. Let's examine them closely to see which ones of them will have a stock. Let's take the first order cycle. Here the lead time demand is equal to five. If we compare five with the reorder point, we see that five is greater than four, which means there will be a stock out in order cycle one. Similarly, in order cycle two, the lead time demand seven is greater than the reorder point. So in order, order cycle two as well, there will be a stock out. In order cycle three, the lead time demand is three. In comparison to the reorder point, it is less. And therefore, there will be some inventory left when the replenishment arrives, there will be no stock out. In order cycle four, the lead time demand is Four, which is exactly equal to the reorder point. This means that exactly zero inventory will be left, but there will be no stock out. There will be neither excess inventory nor a stock out when the replenishment arrives. So in this manner, we can do uh, you know, an analysis for every order cycle, and we will find that in six of the 12 order cycles, there is a stock out. You can see that here. So this inspires the concept of the service level. The probability that stock out can happen in any order cycle. Service level is the probability of no stock out. So we can write SL equal to P of no stock out, which is equal to P of LD, lead time demand, less than or equal to R, the reorder point, which is equal to one minus P of LD greater than R. So if we need a service level X in our system, then we must set R, the reorder point, as the lowest value of LD that satisfies the condition P of LD less than equal to R is at least equal to X. For example, if we want a service level of 0.9 and in our system, if 300 is the lowest value of the lead time demand, which satisfies the condition that probability of lead time demand less than equal to 300 is at least equal to 0.9, then we should set R equal to 300 to get the service level of point. Now let's apply this to the Anshu systems example. What is the current service level in Anshu systems? So if we look at the system, we'll see that in 12 of the order cycles, six of the order cycles had no stock. So if we consider these 12 order cycles as a representative sample of how the order cycles take place in Anshu systems, then we would say the probability of no stock out is six divided by 12 or 0.5, which is the same as 50%. The service level currently is 50%. Now we can ask if R is increased to six from what it is now, which is four, what will the service level become? So let's look at this, these numbers again closely. If R becomes equal to six, then which of these order cycles will not have a stock? or which of these order cycles will have a stock out. So you can see that if R becomes equal to six, then three of the order cycles, order cycle two, eight, and 12 will continue to have a stock out, but all the other nine order cycles will now not have a stock. This means that the service level has now become nine by 12, 0.75, 75%. So when we increased the reorder point from four to six, the service level improved from 50% to 
Now let's go forward and learn another term called safety stock in the inventory system. Safety stock S is defined in this manner. Safety stock is the difference between the reorder point and the mean lead time demand, R minus mu LD. So when R minus mu LD is positive, but that is when R is greater than mu LD, then we say that the safety stock can be directly written as that positive number. But if it turns out to be negative or zero, then we just make S equal to zero because it's not meaningful to say that the safety stock is a negative number. So we say that if the reorder point is such that it is less than the mean lead time demand, uh, in that case, the safety stock in the system is zero. The safety stock essentially is the extra inventory maintained in a system to keep the probability of a stock out within a desired threshold. So you can see from all the discussions we have had so far that if our reorder point is higher, then there will be more safety stock in the system and a higher service level. On the other hand, if the reorder point is lower, then there would be lesser safety stock in the system and a lower service level. And if the reorder point is sufficiently low, then there would be no safety stock in the system. S would be equal to zero. Going back to our same example, what is the current safety stock in Anshu systems inventory? So if we look at the meaning of uh, the, the formula used for safety stock, S is equal to R minus mu LD. If R is greater than mu LD, S is equal to zero. If R is less than or equal to mu LD, first let's compute mu LD here. The mean lead time demand is obtained by adding all these 12 lead time demand numbers and dividing by 12. We get that to be equal to 4.67. So mu LD is 4.67. We are given that the reorder point is four, which means R is less than mu LD. And this means that the safety stock in the system currently is zero. There is no safety stock in the system. Okay, so let's ask if R is increased from four to five, what will the safety stock be? Again, mu LD remains 4.67, but R has become five. So R is greater than mu LD, which means S is equal to R minus mu LD which is 0.33. So now we have some positive safety stock in the system, which happens to be 0.33. This is the meaning of safety stock. So essentially in this video, we have learned the relationship between reorder point and lead time demand. And we've learned how to compute the service level in the system and the safety stock in the system. Thank you.